Hello everyone, my name is Kenny Cormandy from the Airgun Channel, My Airgun Reviews. And today we're just going to talk about a topic, uh, do I have a defective pellet rifle or is my pellet rifle just slow breaking in? Uh, a lot of people buy new pellet rifles and they can't get them to group. Uh, it really doesn't make any difference how much money you spend on a pellet rifle. Uh, you can get a bad one. This right here, this gun costs $300 without a scope and the very first one I got was defective. After 350 shots I started out with shot patterns like this and after 350 shots patterns were like this. They weren't getting any smaller and uh, I had four different pellets to start with. I ended up getting six more pellets. I had ten different pellets. I tried three different scopes and it made no difference. That was a bad pellet rifle. I sent that one back and I got this one and uh, this one started out with the same large shot patterns but after about 115 shots the shot pattern was smaller another 100 shots the shot pattern was even smaller yet and after 315 shots had a not only a respectable group but an excellent pellet group so uh, you can get a bad one no matter how much money you spend you know, I do a lot of pellet rifle reviews and people that watch my reviews know that I've had a bad run with the gamos. And there's always the know-it-alls out there that uh, they think they know it all and they really know nothing. Uh, they tell me I'm just a bad shot, I'm holding it wrong, uh, I'm shooting from the wrong shooting rest. You know, I've got the same gun you did and after a thousand shots I can shoot a fly off a cow's ass at a hundred yards. Yeah, right. I've had people tell me, you know, I got this gun and I'm getting quarter inch groups at 75 yards. Nobody is going to get a quarter inch group with any Magnum or Super Magnum Springer at 75 yards. I don't care if you're Superman, you're not going to get that kind of accuracy. Uh, so, you know, those of you that are living in a dream world, don't bother with my reviews. I've got no time for you. In the real world, uh, you know, a lot of people that watch my reviews know I had a real bad run of gamos. And uh, how do I tell that they're really bad? First of all, very low velocity. I chronograph every gun and very erratic velocity, very low velocity. Uh, I don't care how many times you shoot that gun, you, you get in a shot pattern like that in no velocity, you got a defective gun. You know, after a couple hundred shots, box it up, take it back, get another one, get another one, the same damn problem. That gun probably came off the same line. Take it back, get a different model, same problem. Uh, take it back, get another one, same problem again. Rather than facing the return clerk a fourth time, decided to keep the gun, order a new piston for it, or a new piston seal, I should say, and uh, knock the gun down, and naturally, great big old chunk out of the piston seal. That gun's never going to shoot accurately with that piston seal. You got a shot group like that, put a new piston seal in, and right, you know, as soon as you get it back together, your shot group's like that. Uh, that's a bit, you know, a defective pellet rifle. And uh, I've also had a run of uh, problems with Umarek spring piston pellet rifles. Now the first two I did, you know, which were like the Ruger Airhawk and Ruger Airhawk Elite, those were really good pellet rifles. And I really like them. You know, they shot pretty close to the factory claim uh, feet per second. They shot accurately. And, uh, you know, they might have had one problem or another, but, you know, you get what you pay for. And, uh, but every spring piston Umarex built pellet rifle I've had since then was all defective. I had two bad Ruger Air Magnums. You know, they both had bad piston seals, bad pistons, and uh, a host of other problems. And, uh, like, the, recently the... Ruger Silent Hawk, uh, the Ruger Targus Hunter, uh, two Umarex Torx, all of them had bad piston seals. When I took the piston seal out and put a new one in, gun was a tack driver. 
uh, you know, that's just a problem with the design of that gun. Uh, the spring piston Umarex, uh, that the bottom of the uh, compression tube is just designed so there's so many sharp edges, it's really difficult to get that piston seal in there without damaging it. And where you're on a production line where you got to just keep ramming them in there, they're going to get chewed up. They got to change uh, something on their line. Yet, uh, you know, because of the difference in designs between their spring piston gun and their gas piston guns, I have never had a bad Umarex with a gas piston. They've all been tack drivers out of the box, they've all had really good power out of the box. And uh, I know that if I go get an Umarex gas piston pellet rifle, it's going to shoot good right out of the box. And I know that if I go out and get a Umarex uh, spring piston gun, there's a very good chance that I'm going to have to put a new piston seal in it. You know, it, it's just the way some of these guns are built. And Gamo, they, they've just got uh, piss poor quality control, in my opinion. I did finally get my hands on a Gamo. Uh, Magnum 22 caliber and there was not a flaw in that gun. Uh, it uh, was accurate out of the box, it had really good power out of the box and uh, you know other than a couple of design things that I didn't think were quite as good as a couple of air rifles you know I, I, I gave it good praise I didn't give it real high praise you know I had guns that I would buy before I would buy that one but uh, overall, you know, I did like the gun. And, uh, you know, I really like hot sounds. Uh, but, you know, I did get a bad one. You know, I'm not going to chastise uh, hot sound for putting out one bad pellet rifle. Uh, the bottom line is if you get a gun that's got a large shot pattern and it's not getting smaller you know the first thing you want to do is you want to try different pellets try at least three different brand pellets and see if you get a better shot pattern like that the other thing is if you've got a super magnum springer everybody talks about the artillery hold that doesn't work for every gun I've got four of these Super Magnum uh, hot sons, and every one of them, you got to grab it firmly on the forearm and pull back to your shoulder. It's the only way I have ever gotten a decent shot group out of a Super Magnum hot son. The hot son striker edge, the artillery hold worked fine. It just didn't have quite the power this one did. Uh, all the crosswinds that I've shot, the artillery hold works excellent, except the Crossman MTR-77. That one would not shoot accurately out of the artillery hold. When I tried grabbing it firmly like this, pulling back to my shoulder, excellent shot groups. That one Crossman was different than all the others. It depends upon the gun. You've got to try different holes, you got to try different pellets. But if your pellet patterns are getting bigger, send the gun back. It's not good. If they're getting smaller, keep shooting, break, finish breaking it in. Uh, that's how you tell if you got a good gun or a bad gun. My name is uh, Kenny Cormandy and thank you for watching this video.